Oh my god. This one comes with a content warning. Abduction, consensual bondage, incest, description of past trauma, exhibitionism, cohesion, blood, and violence are present in the novel. Okay. <laughs> Again, a fucking game. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Same old fucking shit. I'm back at the swamp, but this time I have a visitor. You see that? It's like a crane. It just flew out of the bushes out of nowhere. A few weeks ago, I did a video where I read this. Actually, don't I have it here? Where is it? Don't look at me. Stop. Look from here up. Um, Get in My Swamp, an ogre love story by G.M. Ferry. And I got quite a few comments on that saying like, um, not a single comment was like, Hey, by the way, there's a second one, there's a sequel, and you should make a video like this one, reading that one. You should do it. Every single comment was like, oh, um, th there's a second one, too, by the way. Just thought I'd let you know. Stay in my swamp, an ogre happily ever after Aww. is the sequel. So if you haven't watched part one, I'll link it below. You have to watch that before you watch this because I'm not going to do any explaining about this. <laughs> let me read the back. So life in the swamp can't get any better for Leona and Beck. That's until Beck pops a big question that forces Leona to face some unfinished business. <laughs> Marriage can't even be avoided in fairy tale world. She heads back to LA, but Beck isn't too far behind. This time, looking less like an ogre thanks to some help from Winston the Wizard. Will magic be enough for Beck to get Leona to stay in his swamp forever? I don't know. I don't know. Wait, I. Uh I am excited. I did enjoy this. I did like this. I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun, okay? You fuck face. <laughs> we need to bring that back. Like, I feel like I haven't been called a fuck face since I was like eight. I used to be called that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hi. It's a few hours later. The sun's going down. I've read 50 pages of Get. What is it called? Stay in my swamp. It is so good. Like, <laughs> it's, it's everything it needed to be and more. What's occurring is essentially Beck wants to marry Leona. And Leona freaks out and vomits. I don't know what that was. I think she threw up out of fear. But shortly after that, they started fucking. <laughs> Sorry. But what's happening is Lawrence, if you remember her ex-fiance, Lawrence, is her ex-fiance because he is in a relationship with his sister, his biological half-sister, Veronica, who was supposed to be her maid of honor. Lawrence has videos of Beck coming to Los Angeles to save her from the first book. And he hired somebody to follow him back to the swamp and knows where they live and knows all about their community of ogres and fairies and wizards and such. And he's blackmailing Leona because his father died and I don't know. For some reason, he must be married in order to get his inheritance. And he wants to be in a relationship with his sister. So, so in order to save Beck and the village, the fairy tale village, she leaves and goes back to LA and she's gonna go through with this wedding. But of course she doesn't tell Beck. So she just leaves one day and then over the phone tells Beck from her hotel room in Los Angeles. Mind you, the swamp is in Florida. So Beck goes to the wizard, the young wizard, and asks him for a potion that'll give him like a, a better disguise. Cause last time he went to LA in the first book, he did get a disguise, I think, but it just like wasn't very good. I don't remember. And the young wizard says, yes, 
sir. I have the perfect thing. This potion turns you into a human. Now. And he does take this potion and becomes a human and goes to see her to kill Lawrence. He's, he's planning on murdering Lawrence. That's pretty much what's going on. It's like unironically good. It's great. It's comedy. It's high comedy. It knows what it is and it knows what it's doing. It's very like rated R early 2000s comedy. Like it reminds me kind of of like super bad or like American Pie. Just like over the top sex that is so egregiously hyperbolic. Like it's like every second word seems to be cock. But yeah, I think I'm gonna check in in another like 50 pages when I get to page 100. Talk to you then. Oh my god, not even like a minute later and I found something magical. <laughs> Sorry, you just, that was fully just my chin, wasn't it? Look at that. No way, fuckface. What was I saying at the beginning of this video? You fuckface. <laughs> we need to bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I want to apologize for this lighting. I tried to turn on my fireplace, which I thought would be like moody, kind of swampy lighting. It's lit, it's right behind you, but I don't think I'm supposed to use that. I don't trust it. But this is probably the last clip I'll film tonight because it's like midnight. I'm on page 100 and. 13. I think it's about 190 pages. I'm gonna try to finish it tonight, but a lot has happened. It's such like a strange little twisted dark. I think what's confusing me so much is like the intention. I can't seem to understand if it's satire or if the author actually takes it very seriously. I think it's kind of a mix of both. Like it's so fun and silly and then all of a sudden it's just like the most graphic, skin-crawling, spine-chilling sex scene ever. It's especially so weird because they're juxtaposed with this story that's so silly and so seemingly, like, innocent. Like, there's always gonna be some random thing about his cock. <laughs> or her beef bourguignon that is going to be added into every single scene, no matter what. They could go to the store and pick up some tomatoes and there's gonna be like three things that are very pure and innocently said. But then the last one is like, I'm gonna crush those tomatoes up and put them inside your ass, by the way. But <laughs> it's like silly, like it's fucking funny. But then there's these, like what I just read, basically what happened is, <sighs> His name's Winston, the wizard. And Winston went along with Beck to pick up Leona. And he comes up with a plan that doesn't involve killing Lawrence. And that plan is to get a charming potion, which is basically a potion that Lawrence will take and they can charm him into doing whatever they want. What they want him to do is delete the footage they have of Beck, the footage that he's using to blackmail Leona. But Winston is not a powerful enough wizard, so he takes them to a club. The club is called Happily Ever Endings, which is hilarious. Areas. And the person who owns the club is G.M. Fairy. I don't know why, like, I don't know why she used that as her pseudonym. It's kind of confusing because, like, I don't think that G.M. Fairy, the character, is writing these books. Like, it's not like Geronimo Stilton, <laughs> where at the end of every Geronimo Stilton book, it's like, Oh, and then I wrote a book. And it's the book you're reading now, bitch. Do you remember that? But it stands for Godmother Fairy, Fairy Godmother. So they need to talk to this Fairy Godmother because she has the charming potion. So they go to this club, it's a sex club. They're like, what the fuck? Like, this is crazy. But then, you know, I don't need to say, every, like a lot of stuff happened. A lot of, a lot of stuff happened. And they strike up a deal with this fairy godmother to get this potion. And that deal is that Leona and Beck need to perform in front of the entire club on a stage. And they do that. They do perf perform. And that was really graphic. Really, really just like, wow. Up until that point, like, they have been fornicating. But it's always been, like, silly. Like, it's always been funny. But this scene was at the same level as when, um, in the first one, when Beck beat Donkey to death and then, um, had sex with Leona. 
covered in his blood. It was really twisted, which is good, good, I guess, for what this book is supposed to be. I think that's, I don't know, it's so strange. Like, it's so strange. It's so weird. It's so odd. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna try to finish it tonight. So I'll talk to you tomorrow when I've completed this. I'm a crazy person. I'm... I'm... I need help. <laughs> um, here I am to finish the video. I am fucking crazy. But I am free. So last night I finished Swamp, st um, what? Stay in my swamp, an ogre happily ever after. So they get the charming potion and they go see Lawrence at his apartment, but Leona goes by herself. And Leona's plan is to just slip it into his drink and then get him to delete the footage, thus deleting the blackmail. Wow, this is really annoying. Is that better? And she is successful in doing this. She does get him to drink the charming potion. He goes into his closet and opens a secret back door, kind of like Hannah Montana closet, but instead of clothes and shoes, it's just like files and files and files of blackmail on everyone. She gets him to delete the blackmail of her and Beck, but then she's like, oh wait, I can I can't. I want you to release all of the blackmail you have on Veronica, which is like videos and photos of them together. It's like, it's crazy, fucking crazy. His sister, he does it. And then they go back to the hotel room and they book a red eye back to Florida, back to the swamp. And this entire time Leona has been throwing up, it's cause she's pregnant. I knew from like the second time she threw up that she was pregnant, cause why wouldn't she be? So she's throwing up in the hotel room. Beck goes and gets her ginger ale. And when he comes back up to the room, the room is ransacked and she's gone. So using some magic potions, Winston, who has become a total pervert freak, as well as Beck's best friend, but like, he's like very voyeuristic. He loves to, to watch. It's, sorry, this is so, like. <laughs> so they see that she's in a warehouse on the outskirts of LA. It's Veronica, because Veronica never got the charming potion. Beck and Winston go and rescue her and then take her back to the swamp. She finds out she's pregnant, they get married. A year later, they find out that Lawrence goes to jail for espionage. Oh, also the craziest part, they open a club, Winston and Leona open a happily ever endings club within this magical community in Florida. So my, like, this is just like a very innocent magical community of people, not people, fairies and nymphs and trolls. And just smack dab in the middle is a sex club. And in the sex club, Leona and Beck are like the main attraction. Like they are performing all the time, every night in front of their community, who I imagine they probably see when they go to town to go shopping and other things, which is wild. Um, but th that's their dream. I guess. But it ends on kind of a cliffhanger. Winston, for some reason, can't find love. I think he's like Midas type. Like, I think there's something wrong with his hands where like if he touches something, it like turns into gold or something. And it ends with the fairy godmother brings this girl and says, this girl is like you, by the way. And he looks at her hands and she's wearing white gloves. And then it ends, what, is it? what does it say? It says, read Winston's story, Spellbound Seduction, a wizard love story. Some great marketing for her next book. My overall thoughts, you know, it's fun. I had a lot of fun. I read it in like two, two hours, I, not, not, no more than two hours. It's a fun time. Yeah, GM Fairy has got a very twisted, fucked up mind in a really good way. I think it's in a really good way. You know, I, I love fucked up, crazy, gross, disgusting literature that explores the evil of humanity. Like Tampa by Alyssa Nutting, Lolita, Miranda July has written some crazy shit, Eric LaRocca. I think what's different with this as well as the first one. My mindset is not prepared for where these books go because the books that I just mentioned, they are not comedy. They do not venture into the world of funny, haha, -ha, lol. This does. There's this thick layer of comedy and satire, but then out of nowhere, there will be scenes like in the first one with 
donkey and i'm just so unprepared for it like the erotic bits are funny like they are just funny to me but then all of a sudden for a little while it isn't funny and it's really disturbing and it's incredibly graphic incredibly visceral in a way that it just doesn't seem to fit it's kind of like when you go to the public pool and you're in the hot tub and you're like oh i'm gonna go back and swim in the big pool you jump in the big pool and it's way colder than what it was before you get comfortable your body acclimates to this funny little silly story, but then all of a sudden you jump in that pool expecting it to be how it was before, but it's way, way, way colder than you expected, and it kind of takes you back a bit. But overall, literary genius, GM Fairy is, okay, I gotta take this wig off. I mean, I gotta take, this isn't a wig. I'll see you soon, I get, maybe. I don't, thanks for watching, uh, bye. Shit. This is like paint, by the way. I just put paint on my face. I put a lot more on because I was a bit more confident from last time. I did a very thin layer, but this is a very thick layer. So, um, yeah, it's like tight.